guys, and today we are looking at Jurassic World things. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you why uh, Amanda Kirby in the third movie. People say she's great the Indominus, but no. It's not. How is that even possible? Because she left it open because two people are still in the cage. I even left that in the comments. Where is it? Let me show you. There it is. You can't really see it because my camera can't either. So yeah, I'm going to just leave in the comments what you think. But you guys can listen to the video if she did create the Indominus. But I don't think she did. That's just simple. Hello Jurassic Park fans. Welcome back to another video. This one, it's something pretty crazy. But hopefully by the end, I will have been able to convince a lot of you that yeah. Amanda Kirby is one of the most fierce villains that we've ever seen in the Jurassic Park franchise, and she didn't even do it on purpose. Before we get into this theory, I would like to thank the original person who brought this to my attention, and that is Hazagala. Or as a lot of you might know him, Egypticus on Instagram, and I will link his Instagram in the description down below if you guys want to check it out. It's pretty cool. So yeah, thank you, man. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about this crazy theory that just might definitely be true. So in Jurassic Park 3, after the Kirby's Alan Grant and Billy have found Eric, they stumble onto the Pteranodon enclosure and decide they have to go through it in order to get to the other side and the boat. Amanda and Eric Kirby are able to escape through a gate that was previously locked. They are able to unlatch it and escape. During this time, Alan Grant and Paul Kirby are being pursued by another Pteranodon and have to swim underneath a gate in order to escape from it. As Amanda and Eric exit, Amanda turns around and attempts to relatch the gate, although fails utterly and leaves the gate open. We see that the latch doesn't go all the way down, and later on in the film, she did that because two people are still left in the cage. We see it open up completely, allowing the gate to swing open and allowing the pteranodons that were inside the enclosure to escape and roam free. We actually see the pteranodons flying away from Isla Sorna in the enough. end of Jurassic Park 3. This is all due to Amanda I've Kirby not being able to latch the well. door correctly. Since the animals on Isla Sorna are technically owned by InGen, they are tasked with recapturing the pteranodons. In order to reacquire the pteranodons, InGen looks for outside help in the form of Vic Hoskins and his company. As everyone who has seen Jurassic World knows, Vic Hoskins is the main villain of that film and is responsible for the Indominus Rex and the reason why it was made so dangerous for it to ultimately become the first weaponized dinosaur. After Vic that Hoskins successfully yeah. reacquires the Pteranodons, he is hired yet again by InGen and Masrani to work for the company as their head of security. This puts him in the perfect situation to join forces with Dr. Henry Wu and build his ultimate dream of a weaponized dinosaur, which is basically an unstoppable killing machine. Nope. This is of course made possible by the Indominus Rex. The Indominus nope. Rex was eventually nope. born on Jurassic World and later on escaped after executing its sibling, and then proceeded to kill many other people and wreaking havoc throughout the park until ultimately being taken down by Blue the Velociraptor, Rexy the T-Rex, and the Mosasaurus. Vic Hoskins and Dr. Henry Wu are the two individuals that- people say the Indominus Rex might have survived the Mosasaur bite. Did you see how it even grabbed it? It wasn't. I keep saying things, sorry. Just... I'm being well this lately. <laughs> yeah, but, um... He, yeah, but... He got bitten and twisted it like that. And that twist would have... Did you just see that? Oh, never mind. Yeah, the um, yeah. So the, some people say they um they think Lindor's Rex might have survived the most, but it broke his leg. Look at his other leg, not his first leg. Directly responsible for the creation of the Indominus Rex and why it is so fierce. 
Without Vic Hoskins' presence, the Indominus Rex would have never been created and the Jurassic World incident would have never happened and the Indominus Rex would have just been something that essentially was in Vic Hoskins' imagination. In Gen, hiring Vic Hoskins to reacquire the Pteranodons was a direct result of Amanda Kirby being unable to relatch the door. Thus, in a way, making Amanda Kirby one of the three people in the Jurassic Park films responsible for the Indominus Rex. Her stupidity cost many people their lives and also resulted in the toppling of a gigantic yeah, corporation in Masrani and InGen who were responsible for the creation of Jurassic World. Basically, Yo. bluntly put, Yo. if the gate yeah. had been latched correctly in the films, the Indominus Rex would have never been created and Jurassic World would have still happened, but the Indominus Rex would not have been able to kill many people and Jurassic World would still be operating fine today. Anyway, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this theory. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave in no, the comments what you guys think no, about this theory. No, you you did you did do you did do well, but not enough. Or was the video where I said Rexies? Apparently, <laughs> oh sorry. <laughs> nope, nope. Let's see if this. Are you ready to unwrap Jurassic World, the newest movie in the Jurassic Park franchise? Warning, Crazy Nation, this may give your kids nightmares. Your kids. Oh, who cares? <laughs> right, we just, wanna, just wanted to point that out to you. Just let me finish this one. Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Stupendous Wave, is. and in this video, we are continuing the top five in the Jurassic Park series and for this video we will be talking about in my opinion the top five underused dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park franchise no. and but had to have at some point appeared on screen where is it I can't find the video yeah I'll tell you if I can't find this video hmm Uh, I don't know where is it. I can't find it. It's definitely on this guy's channel. Okay, it's this guy's channel is called Dinosaurs. If you want to check him out, Dinosaur Topics. If you want to check him out, let's just find his video first. And no, I don't think it, no, it's not. I can't find it. But yeah, he's saying it, Rexy. Do you know the guy, the, 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 the dinosaur from the first movie is the one from Jurassic World? Nope. He's different eye colour. Rex, he has light green eyes. And T-Rex from the old movie, from the first movie, has dark green eyes. So actually, no, Rex doesn't exist. Well, she does in the Jurassic World, but she wasn't in the first movie. Because I found out, I'm going to give the... Dinosaur, the T Rex in the first movie, and I'm gonna call her Dark Green Eyes. That's a cool name because I figured it out. But yeah, guys, that's all Jurassic World things, and yep, bye bye.